Hi guys, so um, in this video I'm just going to, I just realised before as well and I had to fix this up that I was looking at the data and I'd realised that I'd made a mistake in relation to leaving out the nine. Um, so that just to, to stress it's really important that you quality check and make sure um, that everything looks right and proofread your work is, is another thing as well. Another thing I wanted to talk to you about is, um, is make sure that your ranges there's an equal number of numbers so say for example for the range or the interval class 0 to 2 the possible responses include 0 1 and 2 um, you know so there's three possible responses within that range um, from 3 to 5 there's obviously once again three possible res responses 3 4 and 5 so it's really important um, today I saw someone who had 0 and then they had 1 to 5 and then like 6 to 7 so you need to make sure that the ranges have an um, equal spread. Um, so when we've grouped our data like this, it's not necessarily possible to find um, the median number. So what we do is we would find um, what we refer to as the median class. So it makes it hard once you, when you have re removed the, I guess, um, individual values and everything's grouped. But effectively, what you would do is find, you know, your middle class. So in this scenario here, okay, okay. So nine to eleven would be what um, I'm going to highlight that. Okay, would would be the the medium class, the median class, and that would be totally um, okay to talk about when you're discussing your data. Um, say for example, if your, hang on, I'm just going to pause this for a sec. Cool. Um, another thing that you could do as well in order to find, um, the median value, which is a relatively easier way to, as well, is, and I just really want to stress once again, when the data has been grouped like this, it really does interfere with the quality of like for example if you've grouped the data and then after you've grouped the data you're then calculating the mean medium mode and range those um you know it's it's possible that those results could possibly be incorrect so it's more credible and more reliable when you do it beforehand but hey whatever this is still perfectly fine so in order to find um the median number for your whole data, it would be the same as how we've done here. So instead of going um, like we did before, zero plus two divided by two, what you would do is you would go um, zero plus 20 divided by um, two, which would obviously be 10. Um, so once again, your median value would be 10. Um, but it becomes a bit more tricky when you've got kind of, um, yeah, no, that'll work actually. That'll work with the group data. I had to really think about that for a second. I'm tired. Mm -hmm. um, and with relation to your, so we sp in the first video I spoke about mean. Um, okay, your, I don't know that I've mentioned that. We've spoken about the median. The range is simply like in the previous video is your highest number subtract your lowest number and the difference. And then once again, you've got your um, mode, which is the most frequently occurring number. So say, for example, that's it really easy to read in a histogram because we can see that the most frequently occurring number would be, um, you know, between zero to two, because that's obviously the frequency. So it's the most frequently occurring number. So you could say um, that the most frequently occurring number for this data set would be between, um, you know, zero to two. Um, or if you wanted to, you could um, mention um, it could be one. But once again, yeah, I'd probably say zero to two because you don't necessarily know if it was one. It could have been, you know, it could have been zero. All right. Um, hopefully that helps and hopefully I haven't confused you.